the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things he's done in our lives. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Love you. Hey, everybody. God bless you. You know what? I want to go to a subject tonight that I think is very important. I was recently, as I've been doing some of my studies on the fruits of the Spirit, you know, found in Galatians 5, 22 to 23, but the fruits of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such, there is no law. <laughs> I mean, you, you, you may get arrested for the crime of, of passion uh, when somebody's in a relationship and they do something bad to somebody out of the crime of passion. But that's not real love because real love means that you let go. If someone loves you, let them go. And if they don't come back, they know it was yours. But if they do, they are yours. Amen? In other words, we're not going to get into this uh, right to do bad things out of love. We do good things out of love. Amen? In other words, somebody who does bad things turn from love to hate. You know, what's a mineral salt? There's a thin line between love and hate. Uh, and the same energy that can go into love is the same energy that can be transferred to hate. And we don't want to do that, right? I mean, that's that's not what we want to position ourselves. But what I what I see, and, I, and from my perspective, you know, there's a there's some people that really have a problem stating the commandment of Christ found in John 13, 34, which is a new commandment I give unto you that you love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another. And I was surprised that some people even have the problem with John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Amen. Meaning God loves the whole world. There's a scripture that said that God is love. And what I've seen is that some people, they, they have a problem with what the word says because it's not uh, an opinion. It's what the word says. And next segment I would try to do is the fact is that <laughs> there was one comment made, I, I saw it, that, I didn't catch it a long time ago, but it was said a long time ago, said some people said that some people are more led by their emotions than by the word of God. The question is, I don't know the content of that statement, but love your neighbor is not to be led by emotions, is led by a commandment to love one another. And one thing about love, and some people don't understand that love is an action. You know, there's an emotion that wraps up into it, but it's an action that's, there's, a, there's always an action corresponding with love. That's why you can tell when somebody said they they love you, and but they do bad things to you, you can say, <clears throat> you may call that love, but that's not love. Uh, that's abuse or whatever, right? If I love you, then there should be corresponding actions of gratitude, corresponding actions of, of uh, caring, uh, providing. You know, like if a husband has children, he's supposed to, he should pay child support if he's no longer married. Or if he has a family, he should do the thing necessary to provide for the family. Same thing for a mother who's a nurturer. Uh, she can also be a provider, and in some cases, that's 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 a that's a role that someone play, and sometimes it'll be a father as well. That you know, for some reason, the mother's not in the home. He has to play the nurturer as well as the provider. 
Uh, but but those are, but it's always a corresponding action with me. Like even when God said, "God so loved the world that He gave His only Son, He got the Son." And whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. He demonstrated his love by giving the son. Jesus demonstrated his love by laying down his life for us. Amen. So when, when people have a problem listening to the concept of love, you I need them to ask this question. Why do you have a problem with the word of God concerning love? Where, there is no balance between that commandment. Now, some people say, well, it, it seems like you're, you're telling us that everything is okay, do what you want to do. Where is that in the scriptures? I mean, the scripture says, and it's very clear what Jesus said, Jesus didn't, didn't mix words with that. He said, a new commandment I give you, that you love one another, as I have loved you, that you also love one another. Now, another question you may say, well, how did he love me? Well, we, we know that to the to the to the to first to the, what you call it the, the longest degree is that he laid down his life for us. But you you but let's let's go put in content of his life. I want to, there was a, the next segment I want to talk about where he was moved by compassion. He opened their eyes, he fed those that are hungry. So and, and he also rebuked, especially the Pharisees and religious folks, who were very more interested in condemning people and judging people. He did that. So, so it's not love that mean that that it's it's okay to endorse bad behavior. He didn't say that either. When a woman called an act of adultery, he rebuked all those religious people and those people that, that thought that they had a right to stone that woman. He told them, I'm not saying it's not right to stone that woman. What I am saying, though, is I need to know who out here who has not committed sin to cast the first stone. I need somebody who is sinless to throw stones at somebody else. And, and all of them walked away. And see, Jesus was there. Jesus had the right to pick up the stone and throw it at that woman. But the righteous person, the person who will not sin, he didn't have the sin of Adam. He didn't have the sin of nature. He who was out sin did not throw a stone at the woman who sinned. He told her to go sin no more. But he didn't throw a stone at her. I think that should be fine and interesting because it seems to me that some people, when they talk and hear the word love one another, that they think that it's, it's endorsing bad behavior. No, what it is saying is that unless your hands are clean, where do you get to write to throw the stone? even if it's a verbal stone. If you can sit there and say, well, I didn't do, I didn't do that sin, but you did sin. When are you going to clean up your sin? When are you going to condemn the fact of what you did? Why don't you tell the person that you condemned your past behaviors or the behaviors that you still have not overcome? I mean, I'm, I'm trying to tell you that's very important for you as a believer or you that's not a believer and understand that and in, in, in the world of Christianity, it is to love one another. And we're talking about first of all that love one another first on this is to love your neighbor. They, they love one another. He's talking about believers. And we're going to go into some of the scriptures. Love, believers should love one another, not condemn one another. And we say believers, believers is whosoever believes in him, right? And see, some people have a problem because some people who believes in him uh, still, just like, matter of fact, excuse me, everyone that believes in him come to him with areas that need working on, areas that have issues, shortfalls, right? So when, when we sit there and try to say it's okay to, to, to condemn somebody, you know, you need to understand, you look like a hypocrite 
if you are in fault yourself, if you're doing something wrong yourself, it may not be what they're doing, but you're still doing it. And that somebody sees you doing that, and yet, but you're still throwing stones at somebody else, then you're guilty. You're a hypocrite. Me, me don't like that. Me, people don't like that. But the bottom line is this. Unless you are without sin, to sit there and throw stones at somebody else, uh, you're labeled as a hypocrite. The Pharisees and the Sadducees were so hypocritical. And Jesus busted them out. But maybe you should be busted out as well. <laughs> because you're hearing the word love one another is it's okay to do it's okay to do what you want to do and that, that, yet you didn't hear that in any message because Christ said that the kingdom of heaven is at hand he said repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand repent, turn around take 180 degrees turn and start facing the direction that leads to righteousness Jesus said in John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but me. Some have, some people have found that you've got to come to Jesus through them. And I'm telling you, listen to me, everybody, listen. You don't have to go through any human being, especially a human being that has sinned. They said yesterday, last week, last year, 10 years ago, whatever, they said sin. You don't go through that. They didn't die for you. They can't condemn you. They can't put you in hell. They can't get you out of hell. You don't need to put your trust in any man or woman. You put your trust in Jesus. You put your trust in God. You know, the Bible says, trust the Lord with all thy heart. You put your trust in him. Because he will direct your path. Put your trust in him, not in man. Because man has so many flaws and faults that if you put your trust in him, you're going to have some trouble. And you know you're going to have trouble. If you put your trust in yourself, you know you're going to have trouble. You weren't here when the world was created. You didn't create nothing. All you can do is sit there and make decisions that, oh, based on my senses, I'm going to make decisions. But there's a spiritual reality that we all will face one day and we need to make a quality decision while we're here but that's another story those are people who want to that, that's another story what i am talking to those who are believers so those who don't believe listen to me who i'm talking to a believer you your responsibility is to love one another and feed his sheep those who have the, the gift for ministry is to equip the saints to do the work of the ministry. Then if you're equipping them to condemn one another, pull down one ministry of another ministry, you are sowing discord among the brethren. You, I mean, if somebody's doing something, no kidding, then you go confront them. But you sit there and then I'm telling this, let me talk to you saints. And while somebody's putting somebody down and you're sitting there yelling and shouting, uh, you, you're so in discord too because you know many of those who sit there and shout and, and they hear that somebody who's putting down another ministry or another man or woman of God or another person in the body of Christ and you shout and laugh and you know, you, you are, and you guilty of one of those things that that person is accusing somebody else of? You hypocrite. You are a hypocrite because you uh, you know that you are falling within the label of some of the things that the man is preaching about, but you're sitting there saying, well, they're pointing at him and not at me. Well, they're pointing at them and not at me. Oh, I, oh I'm a shout. Just keep in mind, you can hide from man, and, that, and that's probably why some people like doing that. That's why they, they rather put their trust and try to please man. So, because see, you can hide from a man, but you can't hide from God. And in the end, you will meet him. And all those things that you sit there and try to hide and still put down somebody else, you will be judged on that. 
That's why I want you to hear the message tonight. I want you to catch a point of order that is very important for every believer to check out. Amen? So what I want to show you is the title that I put here is If You Love Me, Feed My Sheep. That was found in John, the last chapter of John when uh, God was confronting Peter, who denied him three times. So Christ asked him three times, if you love me. Peter, do you love me? I guess you have to ask yourself too. Do you love Jesus? And let's go to some of the scriptures to talk about that. If you hate me, condemn my sheep. Those are, that's how they're, they're twisting that conversation. But the real subject is, if you love me, feed my sheep. And we need to understand it's important to feed the sheep. Who's the sheep? The body of Christ. Look at this in, 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 in uh, John 21. This is, this is after Peter had uh, denied Christ uh, three times. When Jesus said, that's what you're going to do. You, he did it. I want, I want to follow that trail because if we love Jesus, shouldn't we also feed his sheep? Doesn't feeding his sheep is to love one another? Preaching the word? Teaching the word? Isn't that what we're supposed to do? Look at this, it says John 21, 15. So when they had died, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonah, lovest thou me more than these? He said unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He said unto him, Feed my lambs. He said unto him again the second time, Simon, son of Jonah. And you can put your name in there, really. Lovest thou me? He said unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest I love thee. He said unto him, Feed my sheep. He said unto him the third time, Simon, the son of Jonah, Lovest thou me? Look, lovest thou me? Peter was grieved because he said unto him the third time, Lovest thou me? And he said unto him, Lord, thou knowest all things. And that's the whole point for all of you believers, whether you are a minister or whether you're somebody sitting in the pew. See, God is going to judge you individually. And, and, and so don't get confused. You can see, it is so easy to try to please man. It's so easy to deceive man. But you're never deceiving God because God looks at the heart of man. He said unto him, Lord, thou knowest all things. Thou knowest that I love thee. Jesus said unto him, feed my sheep. What is Jesus saying? Where's the corresponding action, Peter, to what you say to me? You love me, then do the corresponding actions that goes along with loving me. Feed my sheep. Christ gave a commandment, a commission to go preach the gospel to the world. He gave the commandment to go teach and preach, teaching people the word of God, the good news, the good news of deliverance, the good news of salvation. It's not the good news of doing what you want to do. It's not that. That's not what he's asking, right? He's not asking you to, to tell people, go do wrong, do bad things. That's not what you're called to do. He was calling us. He does call us. He has called us. He is calling us to go preach the good news. The good news of deliverance, the good news of salvation, the good news of grace and mercy. Not the good news of sin. Because there's no goodness in sin. Sin destroys. Sin kills. The wages of sin is death. So we and we know, and, and you know, all the people sit there say, I want to have fun. Well, don't you have fun, but you don't you don't drug somebody, you don't hurt somebody, you don't kill somebody, you don't put somebody down, you don't beat somebody, you don't sit there and put yourself in a compromising situation. You need to determine 
what is fun? Well, that's another topic by itself. The point is that he called us to go and preach the gospel. We are the ambassadors for Christ. And if we have shortfalls, those shortfalls to help other people know, man, I haven't arrived, but I know I made a right decision. I know that Jesus Christ is Lord in my life, man. I know that he has redeemed me. I know I have eternal life already in Christ Jesus. And I know that those things that he has begun on me, he's faithful before me. You need to let people know the good news. Stop sitting there trying to say, well, I want to, I want to make sure that you, you put the fear of God in you. If a person doesn't believe in God, how you put the fear of God in them? If a person has a stronghold in them, how is the fear when it's supposed to be love, when it's supposed to be faith, how is fear? It may work on you, but it don't work on everybody. It don't work on enough people. Because a lot of cases, they avoid you. You just need to understand that. Because you, you have no authority. I have no authority over people. You don't have authority over people, not grown people. And you only have authority over your children to a certain level. Once they get grown, you don't have authority to tell them what to do. Now, if they're still in your house, you can tell them, hey, in my house, you do what I tell you to do and leave. And that's a choice they make. But when you're talking about beating somebody in the street, you can't, you can't make them do nothing. And then they, they, they ain't got to hear you. And how many people turn around and go a different direction when you come? Think about it. And how many of those people are guilty of the things that you're preaching against anyway? At least when you talk about the area of sin or the works of the flesh. How many people have unforgiveness in their heart? How many people have hate in their heart? How many people have lust in their hearts? How many people have envy and all these other things that, that are works of the flesh that they are working on and you're working on? It's easy to be more of being transparent to people and preach the gospel, preach the word. What does the word say? You, If you go back to the Old Testament, then you know you're off track. Because none of those people in the Old Testament, you know, you go to Deuteronomy, you go to Leviticus and all that other stuff, they, you need to tell them that every law that, that was put before them, they failed. 